I'll say one more thing, because I want to get this guy in the Hall of Fame. I want people to know that, that not just the champion he is. In, I believe it was the late 90s, you recognized like widespread uh, steroid use in the minor leagues, and you yourself, I believe, addressed it with uh, no, minor big, league in players. Big, in the big leagues. The first telltale signs were guys that were getting stronger very quickly. You saw them at the end of the season by the time of spring training, or if they were getting stronger and not working. When that was happening, a bunch of us sent it upstairs. Upstairs sent it to Major League Baseball. Well, the media has really punished C League, and they punished a lot of us for not knowing more about it. What could you do? You pushed it up. The union said no. So, uh, you know, it's a really difficult area. It's an area that's not trusted. Talk about trust. Fans don't trust. Uh, they don't trust any of us. So, what I'm telling you, you know, you can believe it or not believe it, but it's the truth. When we identified somebody on our club that we thought was using that stuff, we reported it. We did not accept it. All we know is Dave McKay ran a, a pure program in our, in our, no doubt in my mind, in anybody's mind. What you did on your private time, we don't, we're not policemen, we don't go watch them. I mean, you remember the, the stuff, you know, you get acne on your back, you know, you have potential impotency. That's why I, you know, one of my favorite examples to bring out is Mark McGuire, who's been, in my opinion, uh, very seriously tainted and unfairly. Uh, Mark agreed that he used a little bit for a short period of time. Most of the stuff that he used, that yeast ec extract, he used HDH for his heels. It was a prescription. Well, he's had five children, tri triplets and two boys, since he retired. <laughs> What was the hardest part for you of watching McGuire testify on Capitol Hill? Trying to explain what he did, um, which in my opinion was a great majority it was legitimate, would not have gone over well. He just was not going to admit, he wasn't going to say that he didn't do what he did a little bit of. I also know that Mark is a very private guy, very uncomfortable in that situation. I felt bad for him because I know who he is and, what he, and uh, the quality of the man personally and professionally. I think it's a blip on the radar. And um, I said that and, you know, I've been accused of uh, blind eye, but I don't think so. So when looking at Hank Aaron's all-time home run record versus Barry Bonds or, you know, Roger Maris' single season home, right, home run record versus what McGuire Bonds would have set its, um, that's one of the favorite questions that you've asked. When I see the home run hitters today, I think to myself, they don't understand the advantages they have and they don't appreciate the advantages they have to the disrespect generally of the history of the game and the great sluggers of the past. My point is Hank Aaron and whatever home run here you wanted to pick, in these days, under these conditions, would hit more home runs than these young guys are thinking they're, they're, they're uh, the gift to baseball. Is that still the record in your mind? I'm just saying, if, if those guys hit in these conditions, yeah. they would hit more. And, and the way that the ball is, and the type of ballparks, the type of pitching you face, uh, the type of, of uh, retaliation that you're not allowed, Hank Aaron would hit, would, would be the best home run hitter around today. Your fondest memory from McGuire's 70 home run seasons, what? Uh, I had a lot of, my number one impression was he got to 62 first and Sammy was behind him. As they got into the last month, Sammy took the lead going into the last weekend by one home run. That was one of the great, in my opinion, Michael Jordan, whatever sport, whatever clutch producer, McGuire's performance that last weekend hit five. Knowing if he didn't, how, it would have been humiliating to lose the thing. And I don't want to embarrass him. So by the time the night was over, I said, Mark, get some rest. 
I'm going to write you in there and I'm going to be watching you. If it looks to me like you're beat, I'll get you out of there right away. But you got to, I can't, you just can't miss that game. Bam! 69. So then he comes up in the seventh inning. He says, man, how much more? He says, okay, one more at bat. And I mean, you, when you have it, go to first base and I'll take you out at the people. Bam! There's 70. That's my number one Mark McGuire. I'll say one more thing because I want to get this guy in the Hall of Fame. I want people to know that not just the champion he is. At the end of the 01 season, he had 29 home runs and 300 at bats. Had a bad back. 29 and 300 at bats. Then he figure out during the winter he gets his back better. Bill DeWitt, the owner, gave him a contract for 15 million bucks a year for two years. That's 30 million dollars. Most guys sign it, and for two years they had done the best they could. McGuire turned to back and says, I can't play to that level, Bill. Walked away from $30 million. Now, if that's not integrity, I, I, don't, I don't know one that is. That's Mark McGuire.